this is Rohit and I am back from the linear regression class. So today we are going to be talking about something called logistic regression. But before kind of we get into what is understanding what is logistic regression, from today onwards our journey kind of takes on a new direction. So till linear regression we were talking about making prediction about discontinuous variables, right? So that was all regression was all about. So now we are going to be talking about prediction about discrete variables. And that is basically a classification task, right? So we have, we understand what is a classification versus what is a regression task, right? Regression is very predicting whether what is the house price would be. And the same task classification would be basically predicting whether the house would get sold or not. That's a yes or a no problem. A discrete variable when you're trying to predict, that's a classification problem. And today onwards, we are going to start our classification journey. So kind of let's get ready for it, right? So logistic regression, right? So program so far. So what we have learned is different types of machine learning algorithms, which is machine learning regression problems. We have learned about linear regression, right? We have learned about why linear regression can tend, of, tend to get overfitted and how you kind of counter that different ways of countering overfitting, right? L1 regression, L2 regression, we have understood that, right? And we also learn how to fit a linear model to our data on house price data set. And we also learned about, as I said, L1 regression and L2 regression. So kind of to summarize things, this is what we have learned as of now. So what we have learned is this, y equals to theta naught plus theta one x one plus theta two x two. So your final y prediction basically looks like this, right? If you have say x n variables. So this is something that we already know from linear regression days. We know how this theta naught. So you're, when you're doing linear regression, you what you're doing is you're expressing your y prediction as a sum of all of these values. And your job of the algorithm is basically to find this best possible values of theta. Now, how does it do it? Gradient descent, right? So this is something we already have known and we already understand, right? Now, logistic regression is going to be something extremely simple and extremely easy to understand once you have clearly very sure about your understanding on linear regression. So from linear regression, we are only going to talk about do two tweaks, right? So I'm going to just change two things about linear regression to make it suitable for a logistic regression. Now, as towards the class kind of progresses, you will realize what are those two tweaks, but that's about it. Just those two tweaks and we'll have something that is working right away for classification tasks, right? So we are going to take linear regression, everything as it is, right? The whole parameter concept, the gradient descent concept, and we are just going to make two tweaks to it and that's it. And we should be able to start off with our whole logistic regression starter kit, right? So now let's try and go back and understand what are those two tweaks and so before that let's kind of try and use linear regression to for classification problems right let's first try doing linear regression for classification problems and see how that goes okay so what type of problem is this right so the problem about john trying to move into a new city that's the story and we have been seeing that when he was trying to move into a new city he was trying to predict house prices now he's into a new city he wants to see what are the loan prices and would he get a loan or not now, would he get a loan or not is suddenly not anymore a regression problem it's a classification problem right why because you could get loan yes or no right one or a zero so that's a binary possible states right and because of binary possible options it's a classification problem so that's exactly what it says so even so for the same for next example we are going to consider a case where we are going to talking about where we are going to be talking about tumor sizes and whether the tumor given the tumor size whether the tumor is malignant or non-malignant benign right so again that is a classification problem because the there are only two possible options right it's malignant or benign so your independent feature is one and zero those are the two possible options whereas your independent feature is the size right so given that is the whole context let's try and understand if we can use if we can use linear regression techniques directly as it is for classification. Let's see what happens there, right? Yeah, so now let's look how this data set looks like. As you can clearly see, the data set is clearly divided into two possible classes. This is the one class, class one, and you can see their tumor sizes are starting from around somewhere around zero, going all the way to 2.5. And you see these are the negative classes. They are spread between minus 1.5 and less than zero, right? So intuitively, this is very clear to understand. So all tumors which are of greater than size zero, 
So frankly, this cannot be a tumor problem because uh, tumors cannot have negative sizes. But for hypothetic, this is this is a made up data set, so don't get worked about that. So what we are going to do is, it's very clearly intuitive from this that every tumor that is greater than size zero is a positive. Every tumor that is less than size zero is a negative tumor, right? So we can clearly manually see the difference, but let's try and understand and not understand, but let's try and use our linear regression techniques and apply them directly as it is here. And let's see how that works, right? So I have already explained to you, this is a binary problem. So now let's approach the problem with whatever we have learned, right? We have learned that given any problem, we can, if it's a numeric data, right? If it's a numeric data, we can definitely apply linear regression. So it may not be the best possible ideas, but at least it's a valid idea, right? So let's now see how that goes. So how do we apply linear regression? So you first import the model and then you do dot fit x, y, right? And now let's try and plot those points. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking uniformly 1000 points between minus 2 and 2 and for all of those x points, I'm going to see what the prediction looks like, right? So that is your z predict. z predict is the final predicted value. And now this is the how the plot looks like, right? So you can see the plot is pretty... Uh, I would say it's a straight line that you can see and it's it's not very biased anything of sorts you can very clearly see that uh, There are points obviously uh, it passes through and now if you have to kind of if you are someone who's now wanting to you make use of this linear regression line as it is uh, How do you kind of finally make the prediction right? So suppose you have been given this linear line now say if someone comes at the tumor size say 3 or 5 how are you going to predict, right? Because for 3 or 5, your Y prediction is at some number which is around 3 or 5, 1.2, 1.3, right? So how are you going to make prediction based on that? Uh, well, let's try and draw this and kind of gain a more intuitive idea about how this would work. So you have a couple of values around 0 and you have other values around 1. This is y equals to 1 and this is y equals to 0. Now you have tried fitting a line through them. Obviously it is passing through in between all of these points. And how are you going to make predictions for this? This is pretty simple, right? So between 1 and 0, what is the midpoint, right? So this is midpoint is say around 0.5, right? So it's, it's logical, right? You have a midpoint which is around there. 0.5 and using 0.5 you can say basically any prediction value for now for any given x value You are going to see the corresponding prediction, right? So say this is your new x value and for this you see the prediction value and this prediction value is greater than 0.5 So you predict the class as 1, right? So if a, if a new data point comes as x new like this the corresponding y prediction new would be basically Be 1 right because it's greater than 0.5 here, right? So this is a very simple concept to understand, right? How you can use linear regression. And this seems to be working fairly robustly, right? There's nothing about it which kind of, it, it seems like it's a perfectly working model, right? So you have someone who has probably got negative uh, X values, right? So, and then you probably take the prediction there and you see the prediction at this point is less than 0.5. So this class prediction here would be equals to zero, right? So it's pretty easy to understand. When you have a linear line, all you're gonna doing is all you're gonna do is this right you're gonna take this line and you're gonna basically check for the threshold and if it's greater than this particular threshold which we have set out here as 0.5 then you predict the class as 1 and you are if it's not you predict the class as 0 right so that is a very intuitive idea about how you're gonna go about and do this so now related to this whole idea is the concept of decision boundary so what does decision boundary mean Decision boundary is basically that particular set of values of X or particular threshold of X after based on which your decision changes, right? So if your X goes from say your X is all negative here, right? Your X is negative, negative, negative. It's slightly positive and you are still predict for every value you are kind of predicted as negative, right? Or for all the possible values and suddenly for all of these values from here on you would be predicting positive, right? So there's a point suddenly in between here, right? where your prediction changes from positive to negative. So any point here, X, you would basically have a prediction which is negative. For any point here, you would have a prediction positive. Now in between this, this is the point where your prediction changes from negative to positive, right? So this is your decision boundary in this case. 
So this is that particular value of x at which your prediction changes from negative to positive. That's the whole concept behind your uh, decision boundary, right? The decision boundary is basically that particular value of x, which basically separates your negative predictions from your positive predictions, right? So instead you can clearly see that instead of setting 0.5 as threshold, if you had set 0.8 as threshold, for example, right? So then your decision boundary would be lying somewhere here, right? Because at 0.8, so you are, if you are setting threshold at point 0.8, right, what does this mean? You say that if your y prediction is greater than point 0.8, then it's a positive class. If it's lesser than point 0.8, then it's a negative class, right? And you can clearly see that if point 0.8 is your decision boundary, then your point 0.8, sorry, point 0.8 is your threshold out here. Then obviously your decision, this is your new decision boundary, right, D2. Right, depending on the threshold, so basically that, so if you have point data threshold, you can see that before this point, at this point, your predictions would be negative because it's less than point eight. At this particular point, it's greater than point eight, hence decision would be positive, right? And it, this is exactly the point where your decision changes. So depending on what you set as threshold for a linear regression problem, this is how you're going to define decision boundary, right? But the intuition behind decision boundary is clearly simple, right? It's that particular point in X. This is one dimensional, had it been two dimensions, the set of values of x in both the dimension, that basically changes your, that basically separates your positive predictions from your negative predictions, right? So given that is the understanding behind, intuition behind decision boundary. So I've already talked about this, right? So how do we convert a continuous output into a discrete score? You just basically select a threshold, right? You say that if your continuous score is above that threshold, then it's a, one, if its continuous score is less than a threshold, that is zero, right? So reasonable threshold definitely seems like 0.5. And if it's greater than 0.5, we assign level one. If it's less than 0.5, we assign level zero. So this is, a, this is the whole point of, uh, whole idea behind decision boundary. Now decision boundary, as I said, is something that is defined in terms of X and not in terms of the threshold, right? Depending on threshold, your decision boundary would look different, but when you define decision boundary in terms of x, right? So this is exactly what is said here, right? So tracing the line y equals to 0.5, which we drew out here, right? So this is your line equals y equals to 0.5. You see where it meets the line, right? So this is your y equals to 0.5. And you see what is that corresponding value of x for the point of intersection between y equals to 0.5 line and our linear regression line. So it means that if x is, so say this threshold value of x is say 0.8, right? So all that means is, so in this case, right? So in this case, say xd1 equals to 0.8. So what it means is for every tumor size greater than 0.8, you are gonna have it as a positive class, which is, it's a malignant tumor. If its size is less than 0.8, you are gonna classify that as a negative or a benign tumor, right? So that's the whole intuition behind decision boundary. I don't think there's much enough, much more detail to go around here. It's clearly the value of X which separates your positive and negative classes, predictions. So as you can clearly see, so we have drawn out the graph and you can see this particular line. So green line is the threshold line, which is a 0.5 threshold. And we can see that at that particular point where it intersects the blue line, which is a linear regression line, we get the red line, which is our dot, red dotted line is our decision boundary, right? So what does decision boundary again mean? Kind of reiterating the same thing. If your tumor size is greater than zero, then it's a positive case, which is, which means it's a malignant tumor. If your size is less than zero, which means it's a negative class or probably a benign tumor, right? So that's the whole concept behind decision boundary. It's that particular value of X, which changes, it separates your positive predictions from your negative predictions, right? And this, as I've explained to you, depending on the threshold. So if your threshold had been at 0.8, this would have probably intersected this line here. And then you would have a different decision boundary. Yeah, so we always, when we started, we knew that linear regression was not the best idea, right? We had this slight intuition that linear regression was not the best idea. Now let's try and understand why that probably is not the case. Obviously, we are talking about logistic regression. That means linear regression has some problems, right? So to do that, let's try and add some outliers to the data. So what we are going to do is we had our range values all in the range of around 0 to 2.5, right? That was all our values around negative minus 1.5 to 2.5. So now what we are going to do is we're going to add a new outlier point, which is at x equals to 20. And we are going to assign a positive level to that. And then we are going to do the same thing that we have done here, uh, fit another line again, and then try and see how that line looks like, right? Uh, so there's nothing around here. 
and now let's see how that curve looks like right so again now we have got this new line so this red line is our earlier decision boundary if you remember it was exactly at zero now you plotted a new line and now you get a new decision boundary which is the yellow line so you can clearly see what has happened here right so you added this particular outlier point right this red cross out here that is very far away from your original distributions right and you again tried fitting a new regression line and you have this new regression line which is this blue line but because of that what has happened is your decision boundary has shifted it's not anymore this red dotted line that it was earlier now it's a yellow dotted line right and you can see clearly what has happened here there are these two examples which now getting misclassified these are actually positive class instances right you can see there ground truth is y equals to one right but because of the, as you know as i have already talked about it decision boundaries basically that line which separates a positive and negative classes so what it says is anything which is less than this yellow line on the left of this yellow line is basically a negative class and anything on the right of this yellow line is a positive class so you can clearly see these two examples that got misclassified here right so there is a major 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 problem with linear regression using as it is for logistic regression right because it's not really robust to outliers so that i have already explained to you that linear regression is not suitable for classification tasks because it kind of tries to fit a line to the entire range of points that are available and in the process of doing so it's not really robust to outliers so we need to do something about this to kind of get uh, you know kind of control this outlier problem so what do we can what can we do right so uh, instead of trying to fit a line let's try fitting something else so let's try fitting something called an s curve uh, so that is exactly what we are going to do in logistic regression and this is the first tweak I already mentioned to you there are two tweaks that we are going to do to the linear regression algorithm to make it logistic and this is the first tweak that comes into the picture right so we are entering logistic regression so logistic regression what do we need we need our prediction values to be lying between 0 and 1 that's one thing right we don't want the prediction values uh, to go all over the place and also we don't want we want it to be robust to outliers right uh, so all this while we were fitting this particular straight line out here right so this is a straight line that we were fitting and now we realize fitting the straight line is not the best idea what well, there are two problems right the straight line doesn't lie between 0 and 1 and it's not robust to outliers so what do we do we do something like trying to fit a s curve right now let's try and understand what is an s curve So these are your points now earlier i was fitting a line through all of them right now what do s curve fitting means so s curve fitting means you would be basically fitting a curve instead of a straight line you would be fitting a curve like this that's all about it now you can clearly see these values are so your maximum value of this curve would basically be one minimum value is zero right so this satisfies the criteria that the final prediction should lie between zero and one and also you can clearly see this is robust to outliers right in this case even if you add outliers you can clearly see it would not really affect the predictions out here right because your maximum value it can go to is one right so that's the best part about fitting an s curve and this s curve is called sigmoid so now let's try and understand what exactly is sigmoid log on to gray atoms learning platform to unlock more free content subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates